Hi, this is uh, Justin Pineda, and I'm here to uh, discuss the module 4 of the basic ethical hacking course, which is scanning. <clears throat> so if you would um, recall, there are five steps in the um, Certified Ethical Hacker under the EC Council uh, methodology. So the first one is reconnaissance, the second is scanning, and then we have gaining access, maintaining access, and then covering track. So we'll um, discuss scanning um, for uh, this module. So let's start with um, what is network scanning. So <clears throat> network scanning is a methodical process that involves probing a target network with the intent of finding out information about it and using that information for um, attack basis. So we say um, that it tries to check whether or not the, um, the target um, will respond to a certain, we call it probably a knock, pwede kumatok lang, okay? <clears throat> And then uh, we try to see if the target is alive or not. And there are different techniques on how to do that. Okay. So we'll um, explore the different ways. So remember, uh, in the scanning phase, you can be liable for um, any consequences, negative consequences when you do your scanning. Because it's an active activity, okay, it might overwhelm the, the server, it might go down, etc. So you have to have a permission memo allowing you to do scans. Okay. So that's the um, disclaimer here. Okay. <clears throat> so the information you're looking to reveal can be quite varied. But generally, you're keeping an eye out for things like IP, uh, addresses, open and closed port ports on live host, okay, the operating system or systems and the system architecture, uh, services or process running on host. So in, in reconnaissance stage, you would be able to, um, to see this information too. Um, but the difference here is that the information that you'll be able to get during the scanning phase is real time. Unlike during your recon, probably they have collected it one month ago, two months ago, and so on. <clears throat> so what are the types of scanning? So there are different types. So the first one is port scanning. So when we say port scan, um, when you send carefully crafted messages or packets to a target uh, computer with the intent of learning more about it. So um, in your networking class, you know that there are different, there are so many port, um, ports available. Okay? And then um, there are well-known ports from 1 to 10.24. And um, usually um, when you do your port scan, you check the well-known ports. If um, there are open ports, and you would know the services open. Okay. Like for example, if it's port 80, it's web traffic. If it's port um, 22, SSH is on, 23, telnet, etc. And then we have network scan. Um, it's designed to locate all the live hosts on a network, like a sweep. So I, I will do a sweep and check if um, the host is up or down. Okay, so in other words, okay, I think most of us are doing this um, when we do a ping or an ICMP echo request uh, to a target system to check if it's alive, we're actually doing a, um, a scan no? and um, a ping scan to check whether the, the target um, system is alive or not. So if it's alive, then it will reply back. It will uh, reply. Uh, it will send an ICMP echo reply. Okay. Although later on we'll um, we'll um, realize that 
sometimes or even not sometimes most of the time um they try to turn on uh, a host firewall in in the system that's why even if you run a ping uh, icmp echo request it will uh, not give you a reply because there's a, a firewall um blocking the traffic and third is vulnerability scan so it's used to identify weaknesses or vulnerabilities on a target system so there's a variety of vulnerability scanners there are free um, scanners like open bus found in your kali linux um, toolkit and then there are also proprietary ones like qualis um, nesus and there are a lot more Okay. So the goal is to check for um, vulnerabilities that are present in the in in the target system. Like for example, um, patches are not uh, installed. Okay. It's not updated. It will show you. Okay. And later on, we'll we'll discuss why that is very important. Um, why determining the vulnerabilities is very important when you do your um, your hacking methodology. Okay, so, checking for live systems, so we have wire dialing, uh, wire driving, pinging, port scanning. Okay, so, when we say wire dialing, it's an extremely simple compared to other forms of scanning in that it simply dials a block of phone numbers using a standard modem to locate systems that also have a modem attached and accept. Connections. Although this is not so prevalent nowadays, okay, but still, um, certain companies would require you to do wire dialing in their um, organization as part of their scope in doing um, penetration testing. Okay, so these are some of the tools used: to, uh, tone lock, THC scan, and then next scan phone switch. Next is word driving. It's the process of driving around. So literally, you, you're in a car or in a bike, okay, driving around with a wireless enabled notebook or other device with the goal of mapping out access points, knowing which signals are, which place has a very good signal, usually with the help of a GPS device. So um, these are the sample tools. We have Air Snort. Air Snare, Kismet, that's Tumblr, and, and SSID. Er. And these are available in, in the Kali Linux toolkit as well. Pinging um, is the process of using the ping command to detect whether a system is live as well as gain information about the nature of the connection between your system and the target. Simply ping it. You open the command prompt, prompt ping, target IP. Okay. <clears throat> Um, another option is um, you run Nmap. So Nmap is actually the the tool that you will be using a lot during the scanning phase. So there are different types of scans that you can do in Nmap. One of which is a, a ping sweep. Okay, so um, there's a there's a GUI version of Nmap. There's also a CLI version. Um, so for CLI version, you type this command, okay, nmap space dash s, small s and then big p, which means a ping, dash v, verbose, and then space your target IP address. And then it will tell you if it is up or down. Okay. <clears throat> um, checking for open ports, so there are different ways, but um, most of the... Um, most of the <clears throat> checks are done in the transport layer or layer four, um, either through TCP traffic or IUDP traffic. So if it is TCP, okay, you have to remember your three-way handshake or sin sin ak and ak. And so there are a lot of varieties. So for example, if let's see, uh, later on we'll discuss what what. What the different types of um, TCP scans are. Okay, so <clears throat> um, there's another tool called a packet crafter. 
okay, which is uh, utility design to create a packet with the flags you specify. So there are different tools like um, Netcat, ah, sorry, um, Netcat and um, HPing, wherein you can um, you can um, create your own packet, okay, and then launch it and then check the behavior of the target system after. Okay. So there are six flags for TCP and um, in your networking class you might have encountered this and each of the each of the flag use has a specific um, expected response from the target. Okay. So we have seen okay, act, urge, push, fin, and reset. So let's say for example you use scene. You send scene um, to your target um, target system so the normal response would be because it's a three-way handshake it will reply sin act it will also synchronize and then acknowledge back to the um, sender and then the sender will reply back an act so that's why it's called the three-way handshake okay so that's one way of checking whether the target system is alive or not but it's very noisy and we'll discuss other other types uh, of scans in the next slide. Okay, so using HPing three, okay. <clears throat> um, this also used in CLI. Okay, so it's a packet crafter. Okay, how to create an ACK packet and set it to port eighty on the victim? So you type HPing space dash capital A target IP dash P meaning port eighty. Um, <clears throat> so you can craft. Um, why do we need to craft? Because we would like to check whether um, it responds to abnormal packets. Like here, I'm going to send an ACK packet. When in fact, um, usual TCP connections do not start with ACK. It starts with SYN. Right? <clears throat> and like a SYN scan, create a packet with FIN, urge, push flags, set and uh, set it to port 80. So this is an example of um, the command. Okay. And then you're going to wait for the uh, reply. Okay. So types of scan, we have full scan. Okay. Um, advantage of a full scan is that you have a positive feedback that the host is up and the connection is uh, complete. Okay. So there's a complete uh, three-way handshake, okay, done. However, this is very noisy because, um, let's say, for example, I start with port one, port two, port three. Okay, it's easy for um, a, an, a tool like an intrusion detection system will uh, detect these types of um, traffic and then um, flag it as a, a scan and then block you off and record your IP and report you. And then, uh, so so there are variations like you use a stealth scan or a half open scan. Okay? So in, in this case, the attacker scans a system, but instead of sending the final app packet, the attacker sends um, a reset packet instead, tearing down the, the connection. And then there are different um, other variations like a Christmas scan, um, wherein the single packet is sent to the client with axin urge reset and fin all set. Okay. So <clears throat> note current versions of Windows do not respond to this type of attack. Uh, why are we mentioning this? Because if we're going to take the um, the certification exam, uh, you will be encountering these types of questions. <clears throat> and then for fin scan, much like Christmas uh, tree scan, if a fin is sent on open port, there is no response. But if the port is closed, the victim returns reset. Okay. <clears throat> null scan. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll just enumerate some. Um, uh, in in act in actual work, when you do your mapping when you do your scanning um, there's what we call a cheat sheet wherein all the commands are are 
are listed down. And then you just have to choose which one is um, applicable to your target. Uh, so I'll just run through, and then you can you can go back later on. So we have null scan, we also have act scan, okay? and then we also have fragmenting. So when we do fragmenting, you try to break the packet into multiple pieces with the goal of preventing detection devices from seeing what the original unfragmented packet intends to do. So the goal is to ensure that um, the packet goes in and then later on reassembles again and then initiates whatever uh, the intention is. Okay. <clears throat> so this is good to, you know, um, in in advanced courses, uh, this is used to evade um, intrusion detection systems because um, IDS um, signatures are, uh, and anomaly-based features of the IDS can detect um, um, these types of uh, scans or variations of the scans. So checking for specific patterns okay but if it is fragmented then it will be harder for the ids to to detect um, potential attacks or scan okay, for udp scans so as we know udp is connectionless and it does not have a, um, flags so it just sends the packet if the receiver accepts it um, good if not um, I'll send it again. <laughs> okay, so port status is open uh, when there is no response. If it is closed, then an ICMP port a reasonable message is returned. So when I took um, the CEH um, certification exam long time ago, <laughs> I had to to memorize the combinations of these different types of scans. Uh, for OS fingerprinting, okay, um, so part of the feature of um, scanning tools is to determine the platform or operating system use. So we call that fingerprinting. So how that um, how does it work? It um, uh, uses specially crafted packets, okay. And then, so there can it can be active or passive. <clears throat> so for active, which is usually the case, um, we um, we can use nmap and then just specify um, a parameter, and um, it will return back its um, guess, OS guess. And it nmap will show you the the accuracy rating like it will guess it will say that it's using the target is using windows 7 um accuracy rating is 96 percent so most probably that's correct <laughs> okay um <clears throat> for passive it uses sniffing techniques um so you run a sniffing tool like wireshark and then observe what type of traffic is sent Okay. If it's getting updates, Windows updates, probably it's running Windows, or probably it's a server, okay, etc. So um, the type of fingerprinting will depend on um, the need or the requirement of your um, um, of your target or your customer. So banner grabbing designed to determine information about the services running on the system okay, and extremely useful to ethical hackers during their assessment process like um, banner grabbing using um, telnet or netcat okay, to determine you know, the type of server software, the version, when it was modified, last and other information that can be useful. Um, there are newer tools now that you can use to do banner grabbing. Um, there are also proxy interceptors that you can use to get information about the application, the target application. So these are the tools for banner grabbing. We have Telnet, Netcraft, um, Xprobe, and 
P0. And then we have vulnerability scanner. So for vulnerability scanners, it's a special type of automated utility designed to identify problems and holes in operating systems and applications. So it usually, um, so it's usually noisy. You can um, you can run it against, uh, for example, a target target system or systems, and it will. Um, it has a database of common, we call it common vulnerabilities and exploits or CVEs. So it's um, it's, it's a publicly known database, okay? and it's actually the standard baseline of the vendors okay? it's, uh, of the vulnerability scanning vendors. So what they do is they have the list um, of vulnerabilities in a database. And use this database against the target system, and then it checks whether um, there there are matches in the vulnerability list. And they will flag it and alert later on and report it to the um, to the system owner. And most of the time, these are um, system patches that are missing. And they tag it based on severity. Like for example, um, in Qualys, if um, it's severity five, the vulnerability is remotely executable. So it's very dangerous. So you need to you need to fix it right away. Okay, so these are the example tools. We have Nessus, Rapid7, and Retina. Uh, <clears throat> Next is drawing network diagram. So um, this is not required based on experience. Sometimes it's not required by, by the client because by default, they already have their, their network diagram. But some will ask you to, to, to draw the network diagram um, so that they might have a picture if external entities can be able to, to, to replicate the network diagram of the organization. Um, there are two ways. Sometimes um, in in the in the early days, they do a pen and paper. Uh, but now there are tools that can generate very beautiful network diagram reports. <clears throat> and then proxy. So a proxy is a system acting as a stand-in between um, the scanner and the target. Um, <clears throat> nowadays, nowadays it's year 2020. Um, proxies are very prevalent now. Um, there are a lot of um, companies that offer uh, proxy services, uh, even for the end user level, um, to anonymize, um, to, to anonymize the person, to make sure that the person is not tracked, etc. So. Um, in the past, in the past, uh, the use of proxies is limited um, to um, to to ethical hacking or bad hacking purposes. Uh, but now, because a lot of users are concerned about their um, privacy, then um, they opt to to subscribe to proxy services. <clears throat> so, um, I'll have another, uh, probably another um, video showing the actual scanning simulation uh, because here in this, um, uh, in these lecture slides, um, I've already done this and just put some screenshots Okay. But just to show you, okay, so the objective is to use Nmap to scan for live host, open ports, and services. Uh, use Nmap to fingerprint servers and use the CVE website to, to search for corresponding vulnerabilities and exploits with the server scanned. So uh, I'll just run, run this through, okay, but I'll create a, another video showing you how to do it. Uh, on your own using um, Kali Linux uh, 
from operating system. So these are the tools that um, you need: hardware, PC, obviously, internet, um, virtual machine, if or uh, virtual machine if you're going to run the uh, operating system in a um, in an image, and then nmap or zenmap. So yeah, we discussed this um, a while ago. Nmap is an open source network scanning tool. It can be used. Uh, in CLI or GUI, it's active and intrusive scanner. And by default, it can be easily detected by the IDS or the intrusion detection system. So NMAP, again, uh, that's why I highlighted it in, in red color, that NMAP is an active scanner. Permission must be given prior to scanning. So this is an example of a cheat sheet that um, I told you about. Uh, this, the cheat sheets are free to download, usually found in the SANS Institute website. So, um, some years ago, um, when I was working in a security operations center, we, we, we always print cheat sheets that we used and then put it in our desk. <laughs> so, it will give us a, a guide when we, when we do our work. So, these are the common um, common um, commands that you use, okay, parameters, arguments that you, you, you can um, use when you use your um, your tool. So Nmap is one of these tools. Um, other tools have their corresponding sheets as well. So usually it's two pages long, back to back. Okay, so this is the second page. So it can show you the uh, probing options here, okay, uh, what type of probe, and then you can also do scene scan, okay, you can do probe only, okay, UDP scan, version scan, okay, dash O means um, OS detection, and then look at this, there, there is also what we call aggregate timing options. So what is, is, what is this for? So we have... You know, we mentioned about intrusion detection systems. So <clears throat> we have um, paranoid, sneaky, polite, normal, uh, aggressive, and insane. So if you want to evade security tools like an IDS, you can use dash T0 so that it will be very slow okay, and it will be harder for the IDS to detect that there is a scan taking place. Okay, If um, you just want to um, run through the target system, you can use insane, dash T5, very aggressive. Okay? It will easily be detected by the IDS and it will also overwhelm targets and miss open ports. So these are the options. <clears throat> so what we did um, during the simulation is first, um, we we did an IP config and we checked the um, the network config. So we have an IP address. Okay, we look for the um, default gateway. Okay, I did a ping, okay, targeting the gateway, which is the router. So 10.0.0.6. .0 .0 .0 okay, it replied back, and then um, I tried to do a port scan using nmap. Um, this is the GUI version called zenmap. Okay. So what are the open ports? We have port 53. Okay. So by default, and during the exams, uh, like in CH, it will show you something like this, um, an output from nmap, and it will tell you um, what are the protocols open. So you have to translate these numbers into what is this protocol running on port 53. So um, in networking by heart, we know this this D DNS, right? Or the meaning um, a domain name system. Okay. <clears throat> then we have 443, uh, which is HTTPS, port 80, uh, web, etc. Okay. <clears throat> you can also do 
Um, when you do dash O, fingerprinting, it will show you the MAC address. Okay. It will also, um, so it will return back um, the brand of the router, which is D-Link. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, because by default, the MAC address will actually, um, the MAC address will actually um, tell you the, the hardware brand of the uh, the target okay. and then here if you would notice there is a guest operating system 93% open BSD okay, so it's not 100% but most of most probably it's correct the discrepancy would lie on the point something because it says um, open BSD 4.x so we do not know what that X is And then, yeah, so, uh, BS. and then you can check for um, existing vulnerability in the CVE website. So the CVE website, um, you, can, uh, you, can, you can go there and then um, you can search for specific vulnerabilities um, on your target devices. If you have money, and you have subscribed to uh, vulnerability scanners, they would do it, do this automatically with their automated tools. Okay. But for example, you don't have um, available um, available uh, vulnerability scanners, you can do it manually. So the format is also the same. So it starts with um, CVE and then 2015 would be uh, the year when it was found and then some uh, identification number. So we search um, relevant vulnerabilities for D-Link and we found some. 2015, uh, 2015, 2015. Obviously, you would like to check the latest ones and then the high severity ones. So, meaning to say the one that you can own or destroy. Okay. And the um, tricky thing about the CBEs is that whatever is written there was already tested by numerous, uh, numerous security testers. So, if you are able to prove that the vulnerability exists, okay, then it means... Um, that target system can be exploited. Okay, so for the next step, like gaining access, you can leverage the results after confirming it's really vulnerable and launch an attack. And then for Linux 2.6.39, okay, these are the um, vulnerabilities uh, found. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, it will also show you the severity, like if it is low, if it is medium, etc. Um, in the latest version of the CVE, it will even show you how easy it is to, to, to launch the attack. So, everything is there, actually. Um, it's a matter of uh, validating whether uh, the vulnerability really exists, because Sometimes, and not sometimes, a lot of times, um, the output, and there are so many outputs coming from the vulnerability scanners, but majority of them are false positives, meaning it alerts, um, but it's not really, um, it's not really true. <laughs> the vulnerability does not exist in the target system, so you have to validate. So this is the, the task, so you can, we'll try to, to do another video showing um, a sample scanning on testphp.vulnweb.com. So ping, there are instructions here like ping the host in the command prompt, check the website, do a port scan. Okay, if, similar to what we did in, uh, in the previous example. 
fingerprint the host, determine the OS, look for the vulnerability in the CVE website. So um, that wraps up um, our basic um, introduction to scanning. So if you have um, any questions, send me an email at justinp.penedacybersecurity.com or you can leave your questions in the comment section. Okay, so thank you and goodbye.